Hello, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. This is Dylan over there. He's trying to bury a his fox toy in a towel. That's not working as well as he thought it would. Anyway, we're going to be talking about my most anticipated or some of my most anticipated books for November and December of 2018. Now just FYI, these are all the US publishers and publishing dates. And of course the dates are subject to change. So so keep that in mind if you ever go looking up these books. But of course, they will all be down in the box below. You can go check that out. So let's start with the first date, and that is November 6th. Of course, I couldn't not talk about Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon. Uh, this is a sequel to Franklin's Flying Bookshop, and I really love Franklin, and so I actually bought a copy of this for my niece as well. So it can go to my collection and hers. And she is now a little over six months old. So I think she might not quite be there, but I have been informed by my nephew Jack, who I bought the first book, Franklin's Flying Bookshop, for, that he also wants to read this book. Uh, so I said, hey, you could read it to her. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, this is just about how Franklin wants to find his family, and so he and Luna fly to the moon. And your random page of the day is... Ooh, I wonder what that's about. Well, you'll have to just get a copy and check it out for yourself. This is from uh, Thames and Hudson, and that's also in the UK. It's also out from Thames and Hudson, and it's already out. So it just has, it, this is a jacket, and the UK edition just has a naked hardback, but also has all the foil, which is pretty cool. And I also want to point out for the US buyers, uh, if the jacket does get destroyed, sometimes happens with kids, uh, the cover is printed on the naked hardback. So it's not like you are just going to have a naked book running around. Anyway, I've never seen the US edition actually, so I was very excited to finally see the US edition of some of Franklin's books, so that's pretty cool. Also on November 6th is a book out from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, and this is The Kinship of Secrets by Eugenia Kim. And this is about a Korean family that travels from South Korea to America to try to make their way in the world. Uh, reluctantly, they have left their infant daughter behind in Korea, and then the war breaks out. And there's a lot of, obviously that's the plot, wondering where what happens to the young child and what happens with them as they're living in America. Uh, and I haven't seen too many people talking about this book, but after reading Crystal Hannah Kim's If You Leave Me, I think this, is, this would be a great novel. Uh, I think there's been so many great uh, historical Korean-American novels out uh, in recent years. I just think that's amazing. So I'm looking forward to also checking out this one. Uh, so definitely look for it in stores on November 6th. Also on November 6th, we have Evenings in Paradise by Lucia Berlin, and you might have heard of Manual for Cleaning Women. That was a collection of short stories that was posted, that was published after she died. Uh, and this is another collection of short stories. I heard on the New York Times Book Review podcast that the guy who reviewed Evenings in Paradise suspected she had written 60 to 70 something short stories, and these collections combined only or like 30 or 40 of them at most. I'm, I'm guesstimating numbers here, but that's the general idea. So he is hoping that more of her work will come to light as time goes by. Uh, but I love this cover. I, you know, it took me a long time to really like the Manual for Cleaning Women's cover, but now that I've seen several books in Lucia Berlin's series that uh, FSG is publishing. I'm really excited for them. I still haven't read Manual for Cleaning Women, but Autumn has, in, has insisted that I need to, so I went and found a copy of Manual for Cleaning Women a while back over on Book Outlet, so definitely look out for that there. You, I've just bought paperbacks of the book, actually, from Book Outlet, so if you want more Lucia Berlin, you can check Book Outlet for the first short story collection. If you want this short story collection, look at November 6th, and that is out from FSG. Also from FSG is The Best Bad Things by Katrina Carrasco, and I'm going to read you the description of this uh, because I think it sounds incredible. Uh, Alma Rosales is on the hunt for stolen opium trained in espionage by Pinkerton's detective agency, but dismissed for bad behavior and a penchant for going undercover as a man, Alma now works for Delphine Beaumont, her former lover and the seductive mastermind of a West Coast smuggling ring. So it sounds like a female-driven spy book set in historical America at some point before, what was that? The Pinkerton's agency? Was that like the FBI before it was the FBI or something? Anyway, it sounds really good, and Autumn actually received a copy of this in the mail from FSG, and I was like, well, that sounds cool. 
So I'm definitely have my eye out for this one coming out November 6th. Yeah, and look at that cover. It's just like, I don't know, it just speaks to me. <laughs> First off, look at this cover. It's also November 6th, and it's out from Arsenal Pulp Press. And this is The Woo Woo, How I Survived Ice Hockey, Drug Raids, Demons, and My Crazy Chinese Family. This is by Lindsay Wong. This is a memoir from a Chinese-Canadian woman and just her life growing up uh, and different things. I think it sounds amazing, and I look forward to, I have a friend reviewing this for Reading Women, and so I'm pretty excited to hear what she thinks about it. I also want to read it myself. I mean, one, this cover, <laughs> but it sounds really hilarious. So this sounds like an amazing memoir, and so I cannot wait to get my hands on it. So definitely keep your eyes out for this book, which is coming out November 6th. So now moving from November 6th to November 13th, we have Insurrecto by Gina Apostol. And I hadn't heard of this book until I saw Gina on the cover of Publishers Weekly's Best of 2018 a list. You can actually find that online and go check that out if you would like to. I'll link it down in the description box. Uh, but this is a book, a novel, about a group of Americans that go to the Philippines to write a film script. So you have two women who go travel to the Philippines. You have an American woman and her Filipino translator and they go in and the American is writing this film script and there's a lot of commentary on different things. So the film that they're working on is set in 1901. Uh, when Filipino revolutionaries attacked American garrisons. So we have some commentary of some history in the Philippines. And I read recently Sinel Barnes's memoir, Monsoon Mansion. But besides that and In the Country, I'm pretty sure I haven't read much of literature from the Philippines. So I'm very excited to read this book and to read more about it. So I'm very excited to get to this book. And I also just realized that Dylan's over there eating a carrot. That's great. That's great. So the next book I have is also out on the 13th. This is from Melville House and this is Death and Other Holidays by Marcy Vogel and it says here on the description the 2017 Miami Book Fair De Groot Prize winner this debut fiction introduces a distinctive new American voice funny tender and wholly original Death and Other Holidays is a year in the life of a young woman coming to terms with the death of her beloved stepfather while attempting to find love in LA. So I particularly think that this might be a great one to jump into. It sounds very literary and honestly it sounds very much like an autumn book. So this is the one I'm going to probably be sending her way. Uh, but if you really are interested in literary fiction and new voices in that vein, I think this is definitely one you'd want to check out. So the next book I'm very, very, very excited about, and it comes out on November 27th, and that is How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. This is a collection of her short stories that are just coming out from Orbit, and I heard about this really, I think, what was it, late summer, early fall when they announced this? And you know, I love the Broken Earth trilogy, I love just pretty much anything that N.K. Jemisin touches is amazing, so I'm very excited for this collection of short stories, which I believe is the first collection of short stories ever to be produced together as a collection and published. So I just love, I just love her. She's just so good. She's just so good at what she does. <laughs> So I cannot wait to get my hands on this collection. I don't even know what it's about, but I don't need to know besides one, the title, and two, that it's N.K. Jemisin. What more do we need? So a writer I have not talked a lot about on this channel because she has not published a book since I've had this channel, but that is Diane Setterfield, and her latest book is Once Upon a River. She wrote The Thirteenth Tale, which I read in high school and loved, and Bellman and Black, which I read in college and loved. So I've been really looking forward to this book. The blurb says, A Dark Winter's Night in the ancient inn on the Thames. The regulars are entertaining themselves by telling stories when the door bursts open on an injured stranger. In his arms is a drowned corpse of a little child. Hours later, the dead girl stirs, takes a breath, returns to life. Is it a miracle? Is it magic? Or is it explained by science? So Diane Setterfield writes these magical stories with magical realism in them, and I just love what she does. They're just everything that I love. Hold on. This is what he wants. You want this? The struggle is real, my friends. So I cannot wait to read more Day in Setterfield. If you haven't already checked out The 13th Tale or Bellman in Black, definitely do so. I really enjoyed reading those stories. So that book comes out from Atria on December 4th. So the last book I have comes out on December 11th from Grey Wolf Press, and that is Milkman by Anna Burns. I don't need to say much about this book, but it is the winner of the Man Booker Prize this year. Grey Wolf has pushed up the publication of this book because it won, so that we in America can finally have a copy. 
I know, Dylan. Are your toys out of your reach? Is that distressing? I am so sorry. Go get them. Go. So I'm very excited to finally have this book in the United States so I can check it out. I've heard mixed th reviews about Milkman, but I know it won the Man Booker Prize, so eventually I do want to read it. Also, she's one of the f she's the first woman to win the prize since like 2013. It's about time. So I'm going to support her. Also, the first Northern Irish writer to win the Man Booker Prize. You know, there's been a lot of complaining that Americans have been taking over, but the fact that even though they were eligible to win since the beginning of the prize, that they haven't awarded it to a Northern Irish writer. It's not like Northern Irish writers don't exist. What is this? <laughs> if you want more about this discussion, definitely check out the Man Booker podcast. They have episodes that come out and they talk about the award and different things, and they actually discuss that a little bit on the podcast. So you'll want to go check that out if that is a topic that interests you. <laughs> anyway, those are the books that I'm excited for November and December. I'll return in December to talk about my most anticipated for January. You can also check out the Reading Women podcast episode. We'll be talking about most anticipated for the first half of the year of 2019. That will be coming out in January. So stay tuned and I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching.